Um, click the links uh, for the uh, alternative video platforms or to join the channel and become a member. Quick video because I hate to get sentimental over schlocky 80s movies that were manipulative back then. I just was too naive to really kind of get a grip on it. And, you know, to be fair, a lot of these movies in... Uh, in hindsight, are they don't definitely do not hold up to expectations. Uh, if you saw E.T. as a kid, you probably go back and watch it and you think, "Ooh, this is too saccharine, even for me. Or um, even a lot of films like Caddyshack. Go back and watch Caddyshack with a piece of paper and a pencil and notice protagonists, antagonists, and um, check out the subtle message of what they were trying to say with Rodney Dangerfield and the other characters. Um, taking the... Yeah, the rabbit hole, going down the rabbit hole, the, the red pill, the honk pill, the they live glasses. It's like once you start to go down that right, that, that path, you look at everything uh, in a different perspective. <laughs> go down that. Go down that. Uh, what's that? Um, so um, they got Goonies. Fire on arc light this position. So why do they do this? Because, and follow my logic here, because they hate you. It's Why, why did Spielberg do that, um, that, last, uh, that last musical he did? Um, the, the Romeo and Juliet, a West Side Story, based off of Sondheim's um, globalist cancer about the... Uh, Puerto Rican gang versus the Irish gang or something. Why, why do they do this? Because they hate you. They really, really hate you. And getting the normie to reach that point, getting to that point of, no, it's just that simple. They just hate you based on who you are. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a, here's a list of 50 movies they made. Now, now carefully note the uh, protagonist and antagonist. Go through all 50 movies. Just go through them, take your time, and then, and then you know, come to the conclusion. Oh, they just hate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just as simple. That's just simple as. It. And uh, West Side Story. It's a musical, but they made it into a movie. I thought it was a musical. I misunderstood the first thing. Uh, they spent a hundred million dollars on it to make a movie, which isn't. I guess that is kind of a lot for a musical. Like I kind of think you could make a musical for. I don't know. If like thirty million dollars would be a, a budget musical. Anyway, so they made this. They made this. Spielberg made this musical. Uh, based on Sondheim's story, who just recently passed away. And uh, it's, uh, you know, Spanish and English, and they don't include the subtitles. Spanish. So it's like, uh, you know, for most people, there's a big hard of hearing community, and a lot of times hearing movies is a bit difficult because there's uh, the sound is distributed unequally. So a lot of people like subtitles just because to, to tune out the background noises to make sure you got all the dialogue kind of thing. So Spielberg says, we're not going to, we're not going to translate the Spanish into English. <laughs> what about the people who don't speak Spanish? Spielberg? Uh, fuck them. They should learn. They should learn to go see my movie. Well, uh, probably more than half the country does not speak Spanish. So, I mean, you're kind of cutting out. And I know, I know your audience very well because I live amongst them. It's the L.A., San Francisco, um, insane people. Even they are not going to go sit through a movie where it's just, you know, half the dialogue. They're looking for, they're looking for, the thing is, you don't need to do the dialogue in Spanish anyway. We understand it's a movie. It's a willing suspension of disbelief. If there's a, if there's an Italian gang versus the Puerto Rican gang, yeah, you could, you could do it in one of the Italian dialects and uh, some version of Spanish. And then nobody would understand it except for the Italian and Spanish who happen to be, uh, I guess, trilingual in Italian. There's like two Italian languages, uh, Spanish and English, because they're living in America. So you need to find that, that, that mythical unicorn who speaks those three languages. I mean, how do they... You don't understand the San Francisco liberal until you meet the San Francisco. Hey, San Francisco liberal. Hey, so uh, your Tesla got broken into again. Uh, it's been uh, two weeks. Every two weeks, your Tesla goes. That's just part and parcel of living in the vibrant, multicultural area of San Francisco. So it costs four hundred and thirty dollars to get that window. Yep, yep, that's what it costs. So you pay that uh, every three weeks. Yep, that's just uh, it comes up to fifty two hundred dollars a year uh, to get that Tesla repaired. Why don't you just leave the trunk open? Oh. Oh, I guess that is a good idea. Yeah, that's what people are doing in San Francisco. They're just leaving the trunk open. Where was I going with this? Um, these people hate you. That's that's what it boils down to. Spielberg is a worm. Yes, I know he has a long history of good films. Even you know, even things like Jaws. Like people think Spielberg's, and they usually think Jaws as his um, masterpiece. Go back and rewatch that for a little bit of wokeness. You'll find it. You got to dig deep, and you don't want to see it where it's not. Um, like sometimes you can just 
turn your brain off and enjoy a movie. But like, there's a level, there's a line in the sand that you cannot cross. Every time I make a video, it's like Cindy Lauper is coming on in the background. It's like some chick band from the '80s or something. Like, oh, hey, a little more Tori Amos or uh, or Fiona Apple or some, or some crappy like bangles from the '80s. It's like really, I swear to God, that's a rare. It's just it's just a coincidence every time these videos come up. Um, as a Cindy Lauper was pretty awesome back in the '80s. Okay, so these are um these are parasites. These are worms that are just kind of waiting to turn on you. Parasites that are waiting for conditions to be right before they can spread the disease of wokeness. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of respect to the pop culture channels on YouTube that do what they do. But Hollywood won because they own the IPs. They're choosing to go down this path, but you don't have to pay for it. And, you know, even seeing it for free, it's like the, the Eternals that came out and the G.I. Joe movie that came out and uh, Wonder Woman and, um, God, the, like almost anything that came out in the past two two years... None of those movies are worth paying for, and none of those movies are even worth watching for free. Uh, um, Self-Deletion Squad Part 2, it was okay, but it still had a little elements of wokeness. They're going to rescue the chick, and she rescues herself. da 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 da, da. See, you got, and they played it off. It was funny, and she was appreciative, but uh, I just, my, uh, my tolerance for wokeness is kind of, um, has reached its limit. And I, I thought that was a good movie, and I watched it once, and then I tried to go back and watch it again. And I got through like 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, this isn't a good movie. It's just, it's a visually appealing movie. There's a lot, um, like the special effects and the cameras and the sets. Everything looks in the right place, but like there's no heart to it. Because, I, I mean, it's little things like the women don't need the men and the men don't need the women. And nobody needs anybody and there's nothing. It's just this core of nihilism. It's just, you're just wrapped around this seed of nothingness. That's all these globalists are. They're just, they worship nothingness. So they're just like, beyond luciferianism it's just the void is what they worship anyway yeah i've taken a lot of red pills lately and um I'm, i think there are more to take i just don't want to take anymore i can't imagine they call it the final understanding i think I'm, I'm good where i am i don't need to go down the rabbit hole any further um even uh you know after now after the rabbit hole i look back at all these movies that i enjoyed in my naively as a child um back in the day and i see the woke cancer that was sneaking in i said like, i watched revenge of the nerds the other night and better off dead um go back and watch them all those movies you know from 75 to 90 uh with a pen of paper and take note of what you see and you'll start to see it creep in too it's not it's not overwhelming, but in something like Revenge of the Nerds, it is pretty clear, like, if you want to go just one step below the surface, like, oh, didn't, did that nerd, the, the, did that nerd just struggle snuggle the blonde, blue, blue-eyed uh, girl? He pretended to be something he wasn't, and he literally struggle snugg snuggled her in the, uh, in the carnival thing. And she, and she laughed it off because it was good. But, like, that was a scene in a movie. You go back and watch that now, like, you see how dark they. I mean, you you have to see. You know what they're saying. I mean, don't don't say it in the comments. Leave just leave it, leave it alone. But like, it's pretty pretty well clear where they're going with that. Um, you can watch all those movies and you can see it. And um, you know, make a video about it and put it on Odyssey, YouTube, and BitChute uh, and all the others. Eventually, you're going to get kicked off YouTube because the puppet masters on YouTube are getting very very nervous. And I honestly think. <sighs> I think there's a fair chunk of Comic Skate and Phantom Menace that are just going to be gently shown the door. Or they're going to be at the position where they're just making content that is so milk toast that eventually people go over to Odyssey. Odyssey is off the fucking hook. There's a live stream on Odyssey every day. And you go to YouTube and there are no live streams. There's, there's like, there's a, probably a 10 to 1 ratio of live streams uh, that are better on Odyssey right now, just because they can say more stuff. Anyway, so Goonies was a perfect movie for what it was, a simple, dumb adventure. You can find it on BitChute. Uh, kids go running around in a Disney version of a cave system. Uh, there's a funny overlay in the United States. They look at missing persons cases, and then they overlay that with the cave system in America. I didn't know America had such an extensive cave system. I thought caves were pretty rare, or the caves were like pretty small, but apparently all across continental United States, there's this extensive cave system and it overlays the missing persons cases, um, pretty well, but who knows? It might just be because it's in national parks and a lot of people go to national parks and, uh, it's not hard to get lost. You know what the first rule of getting lost is? Uh, stop moving, stop getting further lost. Just stay right where you are. That's why you always need a whistle because you can blow on a whistle after your uh, vocal cords go out. It's uh, like if you're ever 
buried in a, a building. You find out a whistle comes in handy. All kinds of stuff. Anyway, so kids go running. This video got really dark. Um, they go running around this cave system while the wacky Italians <laughs> chase them. And that's not politically correct today. Or neither is Chunk. Uh, yeah, that wasn't politically correct back then, but they did it anyway. Uh, it would have to be blonde-haired, blue-eyed, MAGA, Hugo Boss, Trump supporters who are committing 90% of the Malamense acts in the cave system. George Bush is a Yahtzee! No, wait, Trump. Trump Trump is a Yahtzee. They were saying that. I don't know if you go back and watch South Park from uh, 20 years ago. That was the South Park episode. Douche versus turd sandwich. George Bush is a Yahtzee! 20 years later, 16 years later, Trump is a Yahtzee! Maybe they're both just idiots. Can we agree on that? And you know, left or right, none of them have your. Uh, none of them are your guy. If you, no matter if you're on the left or the right, they will bend you over and screw you. It doesn't matter if it's Hillary or Trump. Hey Trump, why didn't you pardon all those J6 people? Ah, oh, fuck them. Let's pardon some drug dealers instead and some rappers. Okay, Trump. Mega. Fucking mega tarded. <sighs> anyway, um. So the kids nowadays would all be trans, BLT, POC, furry, other kin, trying to find more hormones. You know, uh, whatever, whoever runs in 2024 on the R side, I suspect that they're also going to be called a Hugo Boss type. And, and that's just kind of par for the course now. It's like, just lean into the skid, maybe. Accelerate it. What the hell? And, you know, whoever Antifa is adverse to are on the side of the angels. And I'm just throwing that out there. So all this stuff is sort of aimed at the 40 to 60 crowd, I guess. The film environment of 1970 to 1995 ish. It feels like after about 1990s, uh, they increased the wokeness to a noticeable point where it started to become just, it took you out of the movie to see what you were seeing. Um, so what were the best films post-1990? Lord of the Rings comes to mind. Uh, that's kind of the only one that really sticks out in my head. And whatever St. Mel Gibson uh, is, is doing, he is a he is a, a, an angel gifted from the Lord. So for me, Hollywood big budget is pretty much over because after you put on the they, they, they live glasses, you see the subversion everywhere. And it's funny, the, the aliens and they live weren't as evil as the globalists nowadays. Um, but, you know, he went as far as he could with that movie. And what was that movie with them? Oh, that just came out. It was like uh, the guy was an NPC in a video game. And they could have went down the They Live route. But uh, they just couldn't do it. And obviously you couldn't make remake They Live today. Because otherwise, like, to ignore it, the elephant in the room, you it would be so ridiculous that it would call attention to the elephant. And you couldn't actually address the elephant in the, mo in the room. So it's like They Live will just live as a movie that came out and will never be remade again. It was just a, a spark on the timeline. A little bit of a warning that we completely disregarded. Um, the original Goonies was fine for what it was, I guess, unless you're Italian, but Hollywood doesn't really care about Italians. But it wasn't too insultingly woke. Um, and the remake, uh, it's going to be bad. You can just nuke it from orbit because they hate you. Like all those, all those movies, you know, 77 Star Wars, uh, Star Trek, uh, I don't know, 79, uh, Aliens 79, or Alien 79, um... Ghostbusters, Caddyshack, Goonies, Porkies, uh, whatever the stupid 80s movies. They're big budget ones and smaller budget ones. But they're movies that if you're anywhere from 40 to 60 now, which uh, this audience is, uh, you remember those movies fondly as just a part of your... Remember Kim Cattrall sniffing like dirty underwear or something? <laughs> Yeah, what a weird... Uh, that's that's actually kind of a real thing, but it is kind of rare. People get off... Women get off on scents. Maybe men do too. There was a guy who uh, was just flying, and he was wearing a pair of panties for a uh, uh, on his face. And I wondered, like, so are those your girlfriend's? Are those yours? I mean, it's a cool look no matter what. You know, go for it. It's like it probably has the same permeability and porosity as the thing you're supposed to wear. And plus, it's a fashion statement, wearing a thong on your face. Hopefully they're new from the package. Um, anyway, what a weird video this was. I'm going to have to review this one before I put this one up because I kind of suspect it might have might have got a little too weird. Uh, anyway, like, comment, subscribe, join the channel, and I will see you guys all next episode.